Good morning and welcome to Little Chapel on the Boardwalk's outdoor worship service that has been moved indoors because of our inclement weather today. I hope that as you experience this service online that it will be a meaningful one for you. We are having World Communion Sunday today and we're going to be celebrating that through Holy Communion and so you have an opportunity right now to go and get whatever elements you'd like to use for communion today. And remember, these are just symbols. So you can have a donut or a bagel or a piece of toast or whatever you want to use. And the juice can be something as simple as water. Remember, they are simply symbols of Christ's body and blood. A special thanks this morning to Gary Kahunsky and to David as we kind of had to fly by the seat of our pants to get everything set up in doors today. But wherever you are worshiping with us from, I hope this is a meaningful time for you as we gather together now to worship the Holy Christ.
Jesus, our teacher and our intercessor, we celebrate the life of prayer we share as your people, and we thank you for the words of praise and petition given through him. Prepare our hearts for the great gift of forgiveness. Let us confess our sins before God and our neighbor. Let us join together now in our prayer of confession. You, O Lord, have created us to witness and to live in peace with one another and with you. Yet we have ignored your teachings and substituted our own self-serving goals. As a result, we have inherited and perpetuated a world torn by violence, oppression, at the heart, we are estranged from our Creator and from the true selves you intended us to be. Wash us, we pray, with the healing of your grace. Renew us by the power of your Spirit and guide our feet in the way of peace. As we prepare to feast at your table, may we rediscover our identity as defined by your love. Amen. Let us respond now to these words of assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and all to all that is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us, let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our Psalter reading this morning is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived from its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
on this World Communion Sunday, our New Testament lesson comes from the book of Hebrews, the first chapter beginning with the first verse. Hear God's word for us today. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he anointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is a reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God he may taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are two ecumenical Christian celebrations that had their birth in Presbyterianism. On Super Bowl Sunday back in 1990 at Spring Valley Presbyterian Church in Columbia, South Carolina, Reverend Brad Smith prayed during worship for God to help their congregation to remember those who did not even have a bowl of soup to eat. His prayer moved a number of people in that congregation, especially the youth. And that day, they launched the first Super Bowl, S-O-U-P-E-R Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday of Caring. And because of that movement, in the last 20 years, churches have raised over $50 million to fight world hunger. And then Worldwide Communion Sunday, which we're celebrating today, originated back in 1933 at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh. Dr. Hugh Kerr, who was the Shadyside pastor at the time, conceived the World Communion Sunday during his year as a moderator of General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church. The goal for that first Sunday was to bring churches together in, in service of Christian unity, helping all churches to remember the importance of Jesus Christ and how every congregation is interconnected with one another. And so now each year on the first Sunday of October, we celebrate along with the rest of the world's Christians, the Lord's Supper. We celebrate what Jesus did and what by the power of the Holy Spirit he still does today. We celebrate the Jesus who considered family unity to be important. We celebrate the Jesus who welcomed little children into his arms. We celebrate the Jesus that took the time to bless everyone, no matter who they were, no matter what others thought of them. On this day, we celebrate Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Jesus, the promised one of God. Jesus, the Son of God and yet man. A man like us, 
A man who was called to love his neighbors as himself. A man who was tempted like we are tempted. A man who suffered as we suffer. The letter to the Hebrews speaks of Jesus in exalted terms, calling him the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of God's being, superior to the angels. But the letter also reminds us of something else. It reminds us that here on this earth, Jesus was made like us. That he was made like us, just a little lower than the angels. That, that Christ was born with us, born of woman, born as our brother to walk as we walk through this life. Jesus was one with us. Think about that for just a moment. He was on this earth, a human being, one with us. And because of that, he's able to sympathize with us. He's able to identify with us. He's able to rejoice with us. He's able to suffer with us. And because of what he suffered, and what he suffered in faithfulness, he's able to intercede on our behalf before our Heavenly Father. Jesus, one with us. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Christ, our brother. The signs before us today of bread and juice remind us of how he came to be our Savior. They remind us of his love and his faithfulness. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he gave it to the disciples saying, This is my blood which is poured out for you. He did that one evening, and the next day, out of a love for this world, he died. The scriptures tell us that when Jesus died, he assumed the burden of all of our sins, our sins that he took upon himself. He did so that we might live and be one with him and one another before God, our Maker. Christ literally stretched out his body on the cross so that we might have eternal life. He did so because he is one with us. He lived, he breathed, he laughed, he cried in a real place and at a real time. And so today with Christians all over the world, we, we are doing together what Jesus did on the night that he was betrayed. And in his memory, we are breaking bread and sharing a cup. The bread we call his body, body broken for us, and the cup we call his blood, blood shed for us. And in the breaking of the bread and in the lifting up of the cup, we recall how God loved us so much that he came among us and became one of us. And then his son, who became one of us, suffered and died, so that sin and death may no longer reign in this world. And as he shared in our death, so we share in his resurrection, a resurrection given to him because of his love and faithfulness to God. So often we talk about how we need to believe in this God of love, but really what we celebrate today reminds us of something different. It reminds us that even when we don't believe in God, God believes in us. I am sure most of you at some point in your life have seen a Waterford crystal. It is beautiful to look at. The problem is when you drop it, and I never have, but when you drop it, it shatters into a thousand pieces. No matter how hard you might try to glue it back together, it can't be done. And if you are somewhere, somehow able to do it, it never is going to look as beautiful as it did before it was dropped. Sometimes we get the idea as human beings that we are like crystal. We're lovely until we make a mistake. And then life shatters into a thousand pieces and we can't ever seem to put it back exactly the way we want it to be. We can't ever put it back the way God meant it to be. 
But if we're to compare our life to any object around us, I think we'd be better compared to that children's toy, Silly Putty. Like Silly Putty, we can be pulled apart, we can be rolled into little balls, we can be flung against the wall, or we can be smashed flat. But like Silly Putty, we can be scraped back together again. We can be forgiven, we can be reworked, remolded, reshaped. Maybe at times reshaped into something even better than before. You see, God believes in us. God believes that we are not beyond help. God loves us. And God in Christ has come and still comes today to forgive us, to, to scrape us back together again and mold us into something that was even better than that which we were before. It is this coming unto us that we celebrate today. And it is the fact that we can be what God wants us to be. And for that, we give thanks. God has made us his family. A family that stretches around the world. A family that's called to love as we have been loved. To forgive as we have been forgiven. And to give as we've been given to. As we share today in our family meal. We should give thanks to God that we are not alone. That we have both each other and the spirit of Christ among us. The spirit of him who was, who is, and who ever shall be with us. Christ with us, over us, under us, beside us. One who truly loves us. And for that we can say thanks be to God. Let us now affirm our faith. We'll be using the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. Let us unite together in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our invitation to the table this morning is a poem written by Jan Richardson. It's entitled, And the Table Will Be Wide. This is your invitation this morning. And the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide. And the arms will open wide to gather us in, all together. And our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free. And our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with juice. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair, and we will taste and know delight. And we will become bread for a hungry world, and we will become drink for those who thirst, and the blessed will become the blessing, and everywhere we will be the feast, the feast that Christ has set before us. Our have a preparation this morning is let us break bread together. <laughs>
Let us pray. Holy are you, O God of all creation, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Yearning for us to know you, he came to be your face of love and compassion for all on this earth. Hungering for reconciliation between you and your children, your Son became the broken bread of life. Aching for our release from the agony of sin and death, he suffered on the cross so that we might be made well. And as we come together this morning and we remember his goodness and his gentleness, we do so as we celebrate his life in us. And we would speak of that mystery we call faith. Setting aside all that he valued, Christ became our treasure. Setting aside his own life, Christ rescued us from sin. Setting aside our doubts and fears, we now yearn for Christ's return in glory. Here at this table, Redeemer of all creation, we ask that you pour out your spirit on the gifts of bread and juice and on our sisters and brothers around the world. Your spirit gives us life so that we may go and serve others. Your spirit heals our brokenness so that we may bring healing to all. Your spirit graces us with peace so that we may be peacemakers for our communities. And Lord, when we gather around your ta table, we do so with all hurtful words being silenced, all pain being left behind. We come with hope and grace as we join our hearts and voices with our sisters and brothers around this world who forever sing of your glory. Lord, we make our prayer this morning. In the name of the one who came and lived and died and rose again for us, and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was in the upper room with his disciples, and there he, he took a loaf of bread. And after he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, following the meal, he took a cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so every time we come together as a community of faith and we eat from this bread and we drink from this cup, we are proclaiming again the saving grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I'll ask now that as you are at home that you take this, your bread or whatever you're using for your bread and your juice and take the meal now. Gracious God, you have gathered us at this table with all the company of your people in heaven and on earth. And in your mercy, we have been nourished by the living bread, Jesus Christ, 
and we've been refreshed by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we who have shared this holy meal go out as glad disciples of our Lord, following in his way, proclaiming his truth, and living his love for all your children in the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Let All Things Now Live.